So today we're doing a, a live about healing and deliverance from generational curses and sin. And we're just going to dive right into it. Um, so Lord, we just ask for your, your healing, your wisdom, and your deliverance on this video. We pray that you take away every curse and generational sin in Jesus' name that is affecting and plaguing everybody who's watching right now. Let your words come out of my mouth and nothing else. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's get into what does the Bible actually say about generational sin, generational curses. They're different, but they're very similar. So uh, Exodus 20, verse 5 through 6 says, For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. And this is not a punishing God that's out to smite people. This is just how his power and his presence and his influence works in the world, in the universe. These are the natural laws that we're playing by that sin and curses get passed down generations. And the natural consequence of sin is the law of sin. There's two laws at play here. There's the law of sin, which produces death. And there's the law of righteousness, which produces love and produces all of the good outflowing things that you want to see in your life and that God wants to see in the world, in the universe. So we got two laws at play here. One's a lot more powerful than the other. The law of sin is something that will creep in and destroy. It's not him smiting you. It's, it's sin. It literally is like a blemish, a, a blot, like a, an ink stain that literally will blacken the whole paper. If you just let it, let it expand, that's the natural result. Okay. It darkens, it destroys, it produces death. Sin, bring, sin brings forth death. Sin is this word that's really misunderstood. And it really just means going against life, going against life. That's what sin is. And it passes down. It passes down in our blood. It passes down in our DNA. That is why we see diabetes throughout families. My, my family has a history on my dad's side of diabetes. That's a generational iniquity, a generational sin. It's just a generational blemish that got passed down. And it's not always because of the, a person's sin. Sometimes it can be from a person's trauma that was from somebody else's sin. And yet it still needs to be blotted out. It still needs to be forgiven. The law of love is much more powerful. It passes down through a thousand generations. <sighs> and, and that's what God wants to give us. He's for us. The law of sin is pulling us down. It's against us. And that is what is causing these, these illnesses, these sicknesses, these, these <laughs> car crashes, this and everything that's pulling against us, that's causing causing things to go wrong in our lives, this, this is the enemy. This is our flesh that's trying to pull against this. God wants to blot these things out of your life. So let's go to Exodus 34, verse 6 through 7. It says, the Lord, the Lord is compassionate and gracious. He's slow to anger. He's abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents through the third and the fourth generation. This is just reiterating what we were already going through. But when we think of God's punishment, think of Job. He, God didn't come in and smite Job. He allowed the devil to work in Job's life. That is what produces these kind of unpleasant results that are punishment, but they're more, it's not coming from God himself. It's coming from the workers of iniquity, all the forces of evil that have a foothold in our lives. Job had a foothold. That's why God allowed this to happen to him. All the trials that he went through, he had some footholds. He had a stronghold of self-righteousness. And these are the things that pass down generationally, these strongholds, these footholds. We have to accept them into our life. And it's very easy to do when you have trauma because it passes down through generations. An alcoholic will usually have children that might have a tendency towards that, even if they don't want it. 
because sin begets more sin. If you're mean to your children, the natural tendency in them, even though it's your sin, is to want to be mean to you. And that is their sin if they act on that. It's all about if we want to react in kind or not. And if we do, even if it's the other person's wrong and we're traumatized, that unforgiveness, that anger, whatever we hold on to from that, that is what causes the sin through the generational lines to continue. A curse without cause shall not alight. That's another verse that I have in here. It's farther down, but I'm going to read it now. Like a fluttering sparrow or a darting swallow, an undeserved curse does not come to rest. It won't land. We have to have these blemishes, these footholds for that curse to be passed on. And we, we keep on accidentally doing this and it needs to be healed. Leviticus 20 verse 9, anyone who curses their father and mother is to be put to death, but they have, because they have cursed their father and mother, their blood will be on their own head. So when we're mean to our children, the natural tendency is to for the, them to curse us. How often have we been like, oh, if my mom and dad didn't do this, then I wouldn't be like this. And it's true because sin does spread, it ripples. I was just explaining this to my kids this morning over breakfast. I don't know if I did a very good job, but <laughs> sin ripples. And this is why we keep on carrying this out because if we blame our mother and father and we curse them and we curse other people because of what they've done, the curse can land on us now. Everything you put out is going to come back to you. I always tell my kids, what you do comes back to you until you break the chain. And that's what we're going to get into in a minute. Ezekiel 18 verse 20 says, the one who sins is the one who will die. Now this is where the tables get kind of turned because this sounds like it's contradicting what we just read, but it's not. We have to weave these things together. The one who sins is the one who will die. The child will not share the guilt of the parent, nor will the parent share the guilt of the child. The righteousness of the righteous will be credited to them and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged against them. So this is making it personal. And that's what this curse without cause will not land is talking about. Everybody's responsible for their own sins, for their own reactions. Even if it comes from trauma, if you hold for unforgiveness in your heart, then you're the one that's going to reap those consequences, but God can blot them out in an instant. So much of our sickness and illness in our lives is due to unforgiveness. And we're going to touch on that in a minute. Uh, we're going to pray through all of this and, uh, and set you guys free. Uh, Jeremiah 31 verse 29 through 30. In those days, people will no longer say the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Instead, everyone will die for their own sin. Whoever eats sour grapes, their own teeth will be set on edge. Kind of a weird archaic sounding proverb, but it's basically, it's saying that the day is coming and the day is here right now because Jesus already came that you won't be charged for your parents' sin. And let that sink in because if you allow yourself to be cleansed and healed of all of the, the, the traumas and the unrighteousness and the unforgiveness and all of this stuff, you're not going to suffer for anybody else's sin. He already suffered for you. It doesn't mean we're going to have a carefree life. He still is training things out of us and refining but he already took that sin on himself. You just need to actually hand it over and stop holding on to it. Leviticus 26, verse 39 through 43. Those of you who left, those of you who are left, I was talking about people that are left in the land, will waste away in the lands of their enemies because of their sins and also because of their ancestors' sins, they will waste away. But if they will confess their sins and the sins of their ancestors, their unfaithfulness and their hostility towards me, which made me hostile towards them so that I sent them into the land of their enemies, then when, they're un when their uncircumcised hearts are humbled and they pay for their sin, and Jesus already paid for it, that's the payment now. I will remember my covenant with Jacob and my covenant with Isaac and my covenant with Abraham, and I will remember the land. And this is, this is, this is the chain breaking Jesus came to break these, these generational sins, these generational curses. Let's read Romans 5, and then one more verse after that, and then we're going to get right into uh, the deliverance. Romans 5, Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking of command, as did Adam, who is a pattern of the one to come. You have the first Adam and the second Adam. The first Adam, he broke the law. 
And, and that it's saying it rippled through people who didn't even sin by breaking that command. It ripples. We're in a fallen world. And that's where a lot of, a lot of the, the trauma comes from. That's where most of it is. A lot of it's not self-inflicted, but if we hold on to it and don't let him cleanse and heal us, it will stay in our lives. Just like we did commit it. Let's keep going. Um, but the gift, the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to many? <laughs> if sin is dropping a stone and it ripples, Jesus is like dropping a giant rock and it, it washes everything away. Nor can the gift of God be compared with the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. You don't have to be perfect. You're already justified because he was perfect. And if he lives in you, if you let him and his light clear all that junk away, you don't need to be perfectly righteous. Yes, we still strive for it, of course, but he is our righteousness. We put on Christ. We put on Jesus. We're not our old selves anymore. If we are washed by this law of love for, the, for just as through the disobedience of one man, the many were made sinners. So also through the disobedience of one man, the many will be, will, will be made righteous. The law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 8, 1 through 2. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. You don't have any condemnation. Unless you're condemning yourself, self-blame, self-harm. Got to get rid of that stuff because we aren't blamed. He sees us as blameless because of Jesus' sacrifice. Because through Jesus Christ, the law of the spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. You are free if you allow yourself to be so much of this prison we put ourselves in is our own doing by not repenting, by not confessing our blemishes, our sins, our traumas, our faults, we hold on to them. And that's what creates the mess and the havoc in our life. You're already free from everything other than the chains that you're placing on yourselves. So let's break the chain. How do you break the chain? It's three steps. Confession. You have to admit and confess what's actually wrong, what's actually going on inside of you. This is true throughout all of the personal development and therapy world and psychology that blocking and stuffing our stuff and pretending like it's not there hurts us. Confessing and letting it out and letting it go heals us. Therapists know this. They just say it in different words. If you really want to heal, if you really want to change, you have to stop pushing down your emotions. You have to stop pretending like you're okay. And we don't think we're pretending. We think we're just being, um, I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to be perfect. And I know this from personal experience. I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to be good. That is not confessing our sins. And that is holding on. It's literally a holding on of our sins. So first step is confession. We're going to get into this in just a minute. I just want to kind of prime you guys for how this works. First, we got to confess. The second step is repentance. And that's different from confession because repentance isn't just admitting, hey, I have these emotions. Hey, I have these traumas. Hey, I have these problems. It's saying, I'm going to turn around. Repentance just means turning around. <sighs> Therapists and psychologists, they use different words for this. You know, they, they say, you are forgiving. You're letting go. You are putting in new things. You know, you're replacing old thoughts. Like repentance is turning. Okay. The next step is asking the Holy Spirit to search out and heal all roots that are causing your problems. You are a computer database. You're just a really highly refined one, you know, with, with God's spirit inside. And, uh, and you store everything, every trauma, every hurt, every bad emotion, every negative thought that you haven't let go and released to Jesus is still sitting there inside of you. But 
just like a computer, you can go in and search the database. <laughs> the Holy Spirit searches the hearts and minds. It can literally help you pinpoint, it will pinpoint the root trauma for you and deliver it to you on a silver platter and say, hey, this is it. This is what's causing the fruit that you're getting. The Holy Spirit will search inside your computer database and find the, <laughs> just a sec. I have my door locked. We have five kids and um, that was actually my husband, but that's okay. So it can go in and search and find, this is the root of your trauma. This is what's causing all of the problems in your life. All of the fruits. You got to heal the roots in order to get different fruits. And it even rhymes. <laughs> so let's get into the actual healing and deliverance session. So um, I've done lots of these sessions for people where I don't call it a, a prayer session, but that's all it is. And people, a lot of the time, even in the church, are more, um, they're more open to, to doing a, uh, a healing session if it doesn't have anything to do with prayer or deliverance. And that's just not how it should be. It's, it's wrong to think that the methods of the world can, can do better than, than God. Like, where is this coming from the church? It's the same thing, except it's the real thing. Everything else is counterfeits, even though they, they, they can find different methods that'll heal. And they, and they do work. Like, I'm certified in some of these methods. They're not wrong, but we need to trust in God's deliverance and God's healing power way more than these methods. Come on, church. <laughs> Wake up. All right, so we already explained the process, um, confession, repentance, and then asking the Holy Spirit to search out all the roots. It's not complicated, but it is spirit-led. And um, a lot of time when we pray, we don't take time to even notice what's shifting. So as we go through this, I want you to just you can close your eyes or whatever you need to do, but to, tune in, tune upward, and notice what's shifting what feels different because i promise if you if you notice and you pay attention you're going to you're going to feel things you might begin yawning that's a huge um a huge revelation that something's shifting you might feel not just you might feel pressure in certain areas you might feel things lifting but all those things are 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 things moving or energies moving okay so we're made of energy science is proving that every day but we won't get into that now so I just want you to sit and, and notice what's, what's shifting. And if you notice things shifting, type it in the comments, okay? So we're going to confess sin. We're going to confess generational sin because you can confess for your ancestors. There's verses about that in the Bible. And it literally is true. It, it blots it out through the whole family line. It's like a hologram. It doesn't just, it doesn't just, feel, uh, it doesn't just heal you. It, it heals it through everyone that's, that's got that particular sin or curse. Step three, uh, it's repentance. We're going to just... We're, I'm going to ask you to repent of some certain things. I'm just going to pray that God will guide us to the right things. And, and this is an act of participation. You know, you, you don't have to do exactly what I'm saying. Just be in alignment with what we're praying for and, and add things that you know God's placing on your heart. And we, we're going to ask God, ask God to search out all the roots and specifically for generational healing. So, so let's get started. Uh, just, just notice what, what happens and just right now invite invite the Holy Spirit to show you everything that you need to see right now. And I'm doing the same thing because, man, I want this healing and <laughs> deliverance just as much as you. So we invite you in. God, come inside, search inside. We are here to confess to you our sins, the sins of our forefathers, the sins of that we have committed the sins that are just traumas that other people have done to us, but we've held on to them in bitterness we confess our bitterness to you. We confess our unrepentance. We have parts of our heart that are not spotless, that are unrepentant. We forgive all the people that have hurt us. We're just doing a blanket forgiveness right now and confessing like that we are, we and ourselves are wrong. God, you are the only one who is right. Set us on the right course, Lord. Have your Holy Spirit have its way in us so we don't fulfill the law, of, the, the law of sin any longer. If you have anything else that you want to confess right now, that just cry it out like in your mind or out loud. We confess wickedness that we don't know of. Some of us have been following God's way for our whole lives and we're like, what, what sin do I have? We all have it. 
sometimes that's the stuff that keeps us trapped. Why aren't you seeing more healings in the church? Because we don't even see our own wickedness. Nobody's spotless but one. God, we confess the sins of our, our parents, of our grandparents and mothers and father's side. We know that there are things that are causing our problems and our pains and our aches and our everything that's our children's back talking and everything that's going wrong in our lives. We confess that somewhere down the line that was created, but you came to wash it clean. So God, come inside and heal that right now. In Jesus' name. We're going to move on to repentance. God, we repent. We turn towards you in everything we're doing. We repent of lust. Just let this wash over you. Notice what's shifting. We repent of arrogance. We repent of pride. We repent of going our own way without even knowing it and thinking it's right, but it's just right in our own eyes. We repent. We turn towards you. God, hear our prayer. Wash us clean from these. We repent of our sinful nature that is so deeply rooted. We don't even know it's there. It's the water we're swimming in. We repent. We turn towards you. And anything else you feel called to repent of right now, just let it come up. Let the Holy Spirit reveal that to you. Lord, have your way with us. We want to be vessels emptied out of all of this junk, this garbage. We want to take out the trash and have be filled with your spirit. What problem are you having right now in your life? Just, you know, shout it out in your own mind, or I don't care if you shout it out to the room. <laughs> what problem are you having? Holy Spirit, we ask you, God, through your Holy Spirit, to search all of the roots of these problems we're having in our life. Find all emotions, all traumas, all inherited lines of sin, all generational curses, anything that was said negative to, uh, to or about us that we internalized and we made part of ourselves. Search all of this out. Find the root, Lord. Find the root of the most important thing that needs to be healed right now because you know what it is. Search our database. Search our hard drive. Bring it up to the light of day and heal it, Lord. From the root all the way traveling up through all the different branches and all the different vines. Heal it. Got a little kid coming up. Okay, can you wait a minute? Yeah. Okay. Do say hi. Say hi, Jamie. Hi, Jamie. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll get you some in a minute, okay? Okay. Or you can go ask Charlotte. All right. You can go ask Charlotte? Yeah. Okay. Tell her mommy said it's okay. Cute, cute, cute. And while that little diversion happened, cute little diversion, things are processing for you. God's uprooting and healing things right now. God, we repent of all the little different branches and tendrils in this root system that's causing these fruits in our life. We don't want the fruit of these weeds. Search it out. Bring up anger, bring up bitterness, bring up resentment, unforgiveness. All of that comes up right now in Jesus' name and is cleansed and washed away. Heal all emotions, Lord, that are attached to us, that are negative, unforgiveness, hurt, bitterness, nervousness, anxiety, spirit of fear, all of these things. You know what they are? We command them to, to leave right now. They'd be cast out and burnt up. We're going to bring this to a close. We could do this for a long time, and I encourage you to keep on going and uh, and just know that, that this is shifting stuff. And I want you to look in your life for the fruit of what you're doing here. Okay, because it's there. All right, we're going to close this down. Uh, if you want to sew into our ministry, check out our website. I'll link it below. Uh, we're shifting everything we're doing from business into ministry. And uh, and this is part of it, is doing these deliverance and prayer, ses prayer sessions. And, uh, I asked Charlotte. You asked Charlotte. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to say goodbye. And I hope this is beneficial. Please leave a comment below if it was. And uh, we'll see you next time. Say bye. Bye.